time moneyed interests. In Illinois, as in the nation, we need a political party devoted to serving the interests of the people to take the reins of government. That's what the Green Party is all about. That's why it was formed. That's what it is fighting for, and that is what I'll be fighting for. Only the Green Party can break through the barriers to progress in Springfield as in Washington. Not just the barrier of political gridlock that presently grips Springfield, but the barrier that exists between the needs and will of the people and a government controlled by forces antagonistic to them. In this campaign, I will be the champion of the policy solutions that already exist but can't get past that barrier. I will be the candidate for the Center for Tax and Budget Accountability, for a Illinois, for Voices for Illinois Children, and other advocates for budget reform and investment in education as the smartest investment government can make. I will be the candidate for Health Care for All Illinois and the Illinois Single Payer Coalition. I will be the candidate for the Illinois Environmental Council, the Sierra Club, the Illinois Stewardship Alliance, the Midwest High Speed Rail Association, and the local and urban foods movement. I will be the candidate for the Illinois Campaign for Political Reform and the Illinois Ballot Integrity Project. I will be the candidate for STAN to put an end to the Piatone Air- Airport White Elephant. I will be the candidate for the beleaguered public sector workers, teachers, pensioners, as well as our underpaid, overtaxed private sector workers. I will be the candidate for the peace movement, the candidate who will stand up to our misbegotten federal policy and say, we're keeping our guardsmen home where they belong. I'm not saying that each of these organizations will endorse me. Many don't even make endorsements. What I'm saying is that this is where many of my policy ideas, the policies and platform of the Green Party come from. We are a people's party, a movement-based party. Endorsement or not, many thousands of people who support these organizations our voters, and if we get our message out, we can win this election and bring our first Green Party administration to Springfield, accompanied by a number of Green Party legislators. We are aiming for nothing less in 2010. Thank you for listening and be happy to take questions. What is the signature requirement this time as opposed to last time you ran for governor? Last time it was 25,000 for what was considered a new political party. Uh, This time, of course, we're part of the primary system now, and it will be 5,000 votes, which we are – of signatures, yeah, excuse me, petition signatures, which we are uh, expecting to collect as a slate rather than each individual candidate uh, collecting them individually. So it will greatly lessen the petition gathering requirement. Not at this time. What is happening is that the Illinois Green Party, the actual membership-based organization, is having a meeting this weekend uh, in Champaign. And at that time, they will be interviewing potential candidates, and the party itself will uh, select a slate at that time. But does that mean they have to select you as governor? They don't have to. If there's uh, someone else... It's like a convention. And then, of course, under Illinois law, anyone else can petition to seek the Green Party nomination through the primary system. But our actu- the actual party itself uh, is going to be organizing to uh, campaign as a slate, uh, at least uh, for the primary. Do you ever hold a position in the party? Uh, the, the only position I hold in the state party is I'm chair of its platform committee. The state party chairman is Phil Huckleberry, and I believe in the press release we sent out his contact information. Is available. Is this? I know that the Democratic and Republican parties have official state conventions at which they do certain things. Is this like an official thing to, to, to fit state law, or is this just a, a big meeting? This, this is this is not the official state meeting. There's also a state central committee, which is the creature that state law requires us to have, mm-hmm. and that body also meets. In fact, I'm not certain it may also have a meeting during the same membership meeting. But most of the actual business of the party is, is done by the dues-paying membership that are, are in this for the long haul. Um, Rich, uh, what would you be doing now to pass the budget? Would you support a tax increase? And if so, would you be backing House Bill 174, the, uh, which is basically the restructuring of the tax code? 
Uh, what I would be supporting it would be House Bill 7 and Senate Bill 750, which I believe is a better plan. 750 is uh, 174. I'm sorry, it's a new Okay, right. It, it, right, it got reintroduced. Right. But, yeah, that's basically it. See, the, the problem is we don't just need a tax increase. We need a tax restructuring uh, that includes an income tax increase, but much more. And we need the other part of the equation, uh, that uh, not only are we raising certain funds, we're also assuring the people that a certain percentage of the funds are going to be devoted to our schools, that education gets funded at the foundation level from the state, allowing us to then uh, provide a property tax rebate uh, to the uh, to the school districts, so we get some property tax relief. The whole it's a whole package that has to be looked at. I think part of the problem with Governor Quinn's approach is he only looked at one part of the equation and not the other, and that made it, to, in my view, that made it a lot harder to sell. Um, I think the the income tax property tax swap, properly understood, is one that the people will support, and I think that would have helped us break through the, the log jam in this session. On, on areas such as pension reform that the government brought up, and a lot of people looking and say, you know, what we're doing on pensions is unsustainable. Would you support such a plan of defined contribution as compared to defined benefit? No, I think that we need to be raising standards for pensioners in our state, not lowering them uh, as a result of this. I, I think something like uh, 750 or the, or the current incarnation of it, 174, while it, that in and of itself would not be sufficient, it would move us a long way toward getting on the sound fiscal footing, allow us to address the, the, the pension uh, shortfall, uh, and then we have to look at a gradual ramp up. We need to be looking at other sources of revenue, too, and other more creative uh, means of raising money. One of the things that I'm going to be uh, uh, advocating in this campaign is the idea of a state bank. North Dakota is the only state in the United States that actually has a state-run bank, and it is no coincidence that North Dakota is one of the few states that is not in a fiscal crisis right now. Their tax, uh, all the monies they collect as taxes go into the state ba bank. They're able to make money off of this, uh, and, and that's a, a creative idea that we need to be looking at. Uh, it also allows them to uh, enact fiscal policies that can help promote the policy solutions that, that they want to see enacted. For example, they are able to do a lot more with helping students pay for higher education through their state bank system. This is a progressive idea that was adopted by uh, North Dakota in the 1920s, I believe, and we ought to be looking, taking a fresh look at it here instead of constantly having to rely on the uh, more predatory agencies for help. You're watching the Illinois Channel. On July 